Grinders, we're back. Grind Gazetta Urban News Channel with the hip hop twist with a strong emphasis on business. On this edition, we're getting to one of our favorites, WAC 100. To my subscribers, if you didn't know, WAC 100 was the first guy we did a show on. Yeah. WAC 100 was our first grind episode we did over a little over a year ago and we you know you guys know we're a business channel kind of mostly you know hip hop business about getting money so we like to talk about that aspect of things and so on this WAC 100 episode we're getting into the man Behind all the drama, you know what I mean? Behind all the feuds he get into. We all we all know WAC 100 is a dynamite, you know what I mean? He's ready to blow off. But the man is a brilliant businessman. Self-made. You know what I mean? He's not made off the music business either. He He's made off trucking business, real estate all kind of other things then he got into the music business and started making more millions you know and if you get to know him and talk to him personally the dude got some game for you why you think ray j and game has him as a management you know the guy the guy got game you know what i mean no pun intended and on this episode we're gonna let you hear him being very motivational yeah you never thought you'd hear that in the same sentence huh? whack 100 and motivational you know what i mean <laughs> but yeah check it out man as he laces all listen up closely soak the game if you like content like this please continue to like and subscribe to grind gazette where we always pocket watching and remember if you don't grind you don't shine. Whack 100, pull our coat. Life is a big old video game, bro. If you let anything break you down to a point that you stop hustling or you lose your motivation, then it's game over. You's a loser. Get the fuck out the way. Go on, jump off the bridge. You're taking up oxygen, nigga. I fuck with you, bro. You you the you the cure to bro. depression, bro. You the cure to depression. Niggas need to have you on that. Yeah, bro. Even the even the Christian church got a song. Steve Harvey used to sing the song in the morning out here. Some, some fall, but get back up or some shit. They even got a motherfucking song. You know what I'm saying? Nigga, get up, nigga. We built to take a hit. We built to take a hit. That's why we got a spine, nigga. That's why we got flexibility. We built to take a hit. That's it. Nigga, if you gonna bow down, nigga, at the first sign of adversity or a loss, then nigga, you in the way. Nigga, that's right. Uh, let me clip this. I'm putting this on my mixtape. You gotta clear this. Built to take a hit, my nigga. You know what I'm saying? Nigga, I sat right there at 16 years old. Mr. Jones, we sent you to seven years state penitentiary men's facility. Maximum security. I ain't dropped my motherfucking head. Nigga, I tied my boots on tight. Did a few extra hundred push-ups, nigga, and got ready to deal with it. Whatever it was. That's it. 24 years later. 30 years later, did the six been home 24. I make more money than a motherfucking judge, the DA, and every motherfucking body in position of authority in that penitentiary. How did I make my third house? When I brought my third house, they handcuffed me, my nigga. Tried to say I was stalking the motherfucking supervisor of the parole officer. Because they saw me doing a goddamn inspection of the house I was buying. I had the biggest one on the block. And the nigga had the little house next door. They cuffed me, ready to send me back to the pit. Of they had to oh, because you was on the same they block. Called and asked him. Yeah, I said, yo, I got lot 55. If you next door, that means you lot 57. Odd numbers across the street. Call the office. You got the number. Ask them who's the owner of Lot 55. Yeah, I was there yesterday on that street inspecting my fucking home just like you was. Are you mad because that little house is 2100 
the my shit five. They called, said, so said, how you doing? Um, yeah, lot fifty five. I'm in lot fifty seven. Lot fifty five. Who's the owner of that property? Oh, hold on. Oh, Mr. Cash Jones. My PO looked at his supervisor like, man, take them cuffs off this man. Nah, he's still living above his means. Ain't no way I know what that costs. I said, well, you want the, the fucking uh, the number to the finance company doing my loan? Yeah, give me that. So now he under pressure. He want to give me for something. He calls the finance company. Hello? Hey, how you doing? I said in the background, yo, give him any information he want. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, uh, lot 55 on this street, the loan amount, I think it's 565000 or something, something. Now, we talking about 0304. I've only been home four or five years. Uh, yeah, does he have a pre-approval and, and, and does is, is his everything in order for that loan? Uh, yeah, yes it is. He has a pre-approval, but this, 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 that, boom, 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 boom. It's at the close uh, in 45 days. Um, can you fax me over, right, the terms of agreement? I said, yeah, fax it over to him. They faxed it. He looking at it. He said, yeah, something ain't right because ain't no office. I think you prepared for this. We grabbed your, your prison file. You're a manipulative individual. We think you had us call somebody who had all of this because they're not supposed to release the top information because you're telling them to over the phone, right? I said, I tell you what, won't you call that number back and you ask them why they're honoring my voice instead of me signing off for the release. They call back. He said, can I speak to the manager of the office? Oh, no problem. Hello, how you doing? Yes, um, I called and I requested these documents and I've been doing loans for quite some time. You're not supposed to release these documents without, you know, um, a signed approval from Mr. Jones. He said, yeah, but uh, the worker said Mr. Jones um, gave a verbal. Yeah, but how would they know? Well, this is Kimberly Jones' his wife. Mr. Jones owns this loan company. It's his loan company. That's how you know. You, you don't remember me? I've been down to the office with you. You want to come to the office? You don't remember me? He looked at me. I said, yeah, I own that too, nigga. The nigga went down there use my C file to get the people to get back his money. So you know what I did? I tried to buy the motherfucking house and put it in his face. They wouldn't sell it to me. He tried to buy his <laughs> shit. <laughs> my mama tried to buy but they had a wait list for each house or whatever the next one. But guess what happened? Crazy. Guess what happened? The other parole officers in the building, they said, hey man, if we send you loans, will you give us a kickback? I said, yeah, for sure. Nigga, they started sending me loans, nigga, on people they knew. And I was kicking them back money. Real yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, bro, fuck with the world. This world, when it comes to limits, when it comes to rules and regula regulations, when it comes to, how we call it, uh, records. Records are there to be broken. If you let a motherfucker tell you because you in prison, your life is over, you a goddamn fool. Nigga, Nelson Mandela got out after doing three damn decades, nigga, and ran a motherfucking country. Anything possible. Don King went to the federal penitentiary for real. You understand what I'm saying? Right? So, you know, you let a motherfucker tell you uh, because you grew up in the ghetto, oh, because you, you know, this, this, or that. Look, I ain't got no problem with people going to college and getting all the shit they got. That's cool, right? But this is how I survive. What I don't know, I got the money to hire a nigga that does. That simple. Whack, you need a targeting company for the diapers. Okay. Hey, Jeremy, you got a targeting company? I got five of them, Whack. For conference call. Whoa, whoa, Whack, bring the product down here Monday. We set it up. Jeremy said you're a friend of his, you're a friend of ours. That's it. Nigga, stop letting these people tell you that you ain't this and you ain't that. You can't do this. You can't do that. Fuck, fuck out of here. Nigga, I had a welfare recipient mama, a dope fiend daddy. Nigga, I had to wash up in the fucking day. Can't, nigga, don't let nobody tell you what the fuck you can't do. Nigga, they got handicapped Olympics, nigga. People with no legs, nigga, running a hundred yard dash on their knuckles, nigga. You talking about what you can't do? Hello. If you are accepting of that, 
nigga, get the weight. You in the weight. You in the way. Okay. People going to work. You got blind people catching the bus to work. That poor. Fuck out of here with that shit. You ain't lying. It's always somebody with circumstances harder than yours doing better than you. Oh, bro. You know what? This Excuse is me. why when this this is why I say what I say when it comes to suicide. Look, man, my condolences to the family. Nigga, it's homeless niggas, it's niggas doing life, it's handicapped niggas, people that can't see, it's all kind of shit waking up dealing with it, bro. Finding they land and they purpose in this world, bro. I hear you, but I don't hear you, my nigga. Yeah, I think they, I think it's weak, but the only part I give them is at least they just took their cells out and they ain't, they got I out the way. I respect those people. The ones that did they self cool, them niggas that go kill everybody in the job and then kill they, I don't fuck with them. Nah, me neither. Nah, not that. Especially because you got to kill innocent people at church, not George Zimmerman. You got to do niggas that don't deserve you. Like, well, shit, so, you know, in this thing called life, man, it's opportunity. And everybody needs everybody. The filthy, rich, wealthy needs everybody. They not driving their own cars. They need drivers. They not cleaning their mansions. They need cleaning services. It's real. They don't even walk their own dogs, nigga. They need dog walkers. Nigga. They ain't cooking their own food. They need chefs. All those things I named are job opportunities. Nigga, if you get hired as a chef, do like Shaq Chef did. I looked up three years later, the nigga had 15 chefs under him, chefing for other mm -hmm. celebrities. Boss up, be Trade the best at what you do. Yeah, hey, create a company out of me. You ain't got to stand still. Ain't nobody telling you to stand still, bro. But nigga, you know, get get rooted. I have never seen a tree grow that kept jumping out the fucking ground. Get rooted. No, 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 who I'm talking to? That person that got all these fucking ideas and don't never do nothing body. Nigga, plant the seed, get rooted, water that idea, let it grow. Oh, yeah, I'm going to do this, this. You started this, this, this. Then you jump out the ground three months later. Now I'm doing this, this, this. Four months later, you jump out the ground, do something else. A year later, nigga, you in the same situation. Man, I need to hear that, huh? I appreciate that. Get rooted. Stop. Give your idea an opportunity and time, nigga, to grow. Plant the fucking seed. Water the motherfucking idea. Gotta have some patience, you right. Nigga, if this shit was easy, everybody be doing it. Shit don't happen overnight. Them diapers is sitting in a warehouse, LA, stateside. I started it four years ago. Now it's time to go, go get it. Let it blossom. Nigga, you know what it cost me, nigga, to fly to motherfucking Asia, round trip, four flights, and when my people move with me, they sit where I sit. I'm business first, they business first. You know what that shit cost them trips? That's 20, 25,000 a run. It's on the trip. I done made 10, 12 of them shits. Paying this person, this person, that person. I'm out of pocket three, four million. I planted the seed. I watered that bitch. I got $150 million of contracts on the table, though. Now it's time for it to blossom. That's work. The product I was talking about, I can let you touch it. Here you go. You, you turn it into reality. Yeah, bro. We all can do it. Man, we got geniuses, man. Them niggas in the hood, let me tell you something, bro. Them scientists, my nigga, that the government got. Nigga, them niggas didn't know how to take a powder, put it in some water, add some baking soda B12, drop a fucking ice cube in this motherfucker, drain the water, and watch the powder turn into rock. Well, nigga, dude, that is chemistry at its best. Without a book. He's just using, he's just using his mind in the wrong way. Now, that same nigga that had the mind to learn and understand that, 
listen, nigga, go understand how to open a corporation. You can't tell me he can't do it. He just got to apply himself. Can't tell me that man can't do that. Man, bro. You, you, man. Nigga. Are you pimps? Are you pimps? Are you pimp niggas? Man, go open up a used car lot, nigga. You niggas got to get the gas. You niggas sell all kind of shit, nigga. You convince a human being to sell her body and bring you back the money. Nigga, you can go sell cars all day long. Go sell some other shit, bro. I had them girls selling cars. Shit. You got the gift of gab, my nigga. I'm just real shit. All you penitentiary niggas getting out with all the workouts, stop going over there want to play deep on beat a nigga up and go over there and nigga open you up a gym some motherfucker where in the middle of the hood park, nigga, and tell niggas if you want to come bust down and get in shape, nigga, let's do it. Cash out me $20 a day, nigga, and I'm going to give you this penitentiary workout. You keep, nigga, do something, nigga. Because I'm going to give you six to nine months. When them blunts and them 40 ounces in the Hennessy hit you, nigga, you gonna look like you ain't did no time, nigga, anyway. Hey, Lee, boy, I'm gonna send you something. We got every niggas coming in and say, what y'all get for being in here? We got everything on our stage. That nigga, Lee, boy, didn't help military niggas get pension checks they didn't know they can get. Because he met them on this stage. You know what I'm saying? We got all kind of shit, but then just apply yourself. That's all I'm saying. Stop crying by shit. Oh, motherfucking systematic racism. We've been set back. My great great grandmother, triple great great grand, in 1841. Man, if you don't shut the fuck up talking to me, bro, and apply yourself to 2023, them people that already went through that and died for us. For us to have the opportunities that we got today, and you sitting there crying about what they went through? The fuck wrong with you, bro? Who is you? You okay? Well, the white people, they won't let us work over there. That's cool. Work over there to get in place, get enough money, to start doing what they doing and do it better than how you want to hire. Matter of fact, the white dude that said you can't work for him, what he getting paid? A hundred a year? Get in position? Tell him, yo, you want to come over here? I know somebody that can hire you. They'll pay you 125000 a year. What? Hey, I'm going to give you their phone number. Come call the white lady. A year into it, pop up to the motherfucking board meeting, nigga, and sit down at the, at, the, at the head of the table. Then and then let him know he's been working for you. But you done already got the game. If you want to go, fire him, nigga. The nigga been up under him. Who's your little nephew? He can take the job. Learn the game. Now, that's gangster. That's gangster. Drive by, shooting up the park, motherfucking, all this weird ass shit niggas be doing, raping women, all this shit. Shot a motherfucker because you're drunk at the club. That ain't gangster. Anybody could do that. Show me something that the average motherfucker ain't doing, and I'm gonna tell you that's gangster. Uh, my mama was a dope fiend. My daddy doing life. What's happening? I went to the military, got my clearance, nigga, I'm four years old, got a job at Boeing, they paying me 80000 a year, I got all my benefits, I'm finna buy my first house. That's gangster, nephew. That's what I'ma do. I'ma change the, the, the meaning and the definition of what's gangster. I'ma start calling all these, I'm finna make a lot of enemies over the next couple months. You selling lean, you's a bitch. Straight up, fuck it, I don't give a fuck. get no fucks anyway. Straight up. Let, let's, let's change the definition and redefine what's gangster. Since all youngsters want to be identified as gangster, fuck it. Let's not fight them. But let's let's change the meaning and the qualifications of what it takes to be gangster. If you got to go to jail to get big, to lift weights in jail, and you can't eat right on the streets, to get the same size and go to 24 hour fitness, use a bitch. Straight up. Cause I was a bitch ass nigga from 1993 to 99. I was a bitch ass nigga. I had a son on the street. I, I 
I couldn't change my son diaper. I couldn't sit there and play ABCs with the nigga. I couldn't do nothing. I was the while I was in there getting swole in the penitentiary, getting the paw root stripes, I was the biggest bitch in America. And I stand on it. And if you doing that right now, you the bitch too. All you square niggas out here with your kids, you just got that job at Walmart. You didn't got promoted up, nigga, to be a supervisor. You just got the job at the warehouse, the Safeway. You working at the railroad station. Whatever you doing, my nigga, and you out here, nigga, you can take your kids to school, be here for his Christmas, Thanksgiving, and birthdays, go to the parent teachers me. You niggas is the gangsters. All them other niggas, them niggas is bitch-ass niggas. All they know how to do is fight. Squares, learn how to balance out the playing field. He real big, he can fight real good. You ain't got no record, go get a gun. When he come playing, kill him. Deflate his big old ass. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, use the motherfucking tools that you earn. You are a motherfucking citizen of the United States of America with a clean record, tax-paying citizen. Go buy your motherfucking legal firearms, and when that nigga come playing with you on your property, or violate your space, lay his bitch ass down. Because guess what? Okay, he ain't supposed to have a gun. So when they show up and he was shooting at you and you was shooting at him, utilize and do what a citizen could do. Give a motherfucking statement and go on home. Fuck these niggas. They killing our youth. Raping our women. Influencing our kids to do the wrong shit. Fuck all you niggas. Straight up. That's what I'm mad with it. If you ain't telling them to go to school, pull their motherfucking pants up, go to the military, learn how to read and write, Nigga, you teaching them how to motherfucking rock some cocaine or drink some Hennessy and all this old punk ass shit? You the bitch. You a threat, nigga, to, to, to our existence as a people. I bet this won't make you too. Hello. You ain't lying. You ain't lying. It won't. I sure did on all my platforms. But if I go have an argument with Charleston White, it's going viral. This is the world right. we live in. That shit gonna be on every single platform. Straight up, my nigga. If y'all need, if you want them motherfuckers that just can't lead and you need to follow something, man, go look up the nearest mosque. Look up the Nation of Islam and tell them hey, you, you, you want to follow something and this is what you trying to do and you need direction and do it. One thing, especially on, the, on this West Coast, but Tony Muhammad, he tapped into the streets. He know everybody from the streets is doing wrong and is doing right. What is it? Man, I want to drive a truck and I'm a cripple. Or blood. Hold on, let me call brother such and such. He been to prison, he on the right track. He got a truck and come. What you want to do? You want to get off of the security? Let me introduce you to the FOI. Call brother Pitbull. Where you from? You a crip? Okay, we got some crip brothers at. Yeah, go find the nearest mosque and tell them you want to talk to Tony Muhammad and whack 100 cents you. And tell them what you lost and what you want to do and what you don't want to do. That's one thing I can say about that nation. They will help give our people guys and keep you out of the bullshit. That's one thing I can say about it. Hey, 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 what? You know, um, when you used to be in posted room, you helped a lot of niggas with the uh, truck and shit. When you was um, helping them get what their I license charge? and stuff like what that. What I charge them? What I yeah. charge them? Did I yeah. charge them something? Did I tell them to cash at me? Nah. Nope. What I'm here for, bro. We can't Real get it. in the morning, too. Yeah, niggas got to stop hustling, hustling off our people. That's our problem. A nigga know a door over here with a million motherfucking loaves of bread. And this man over here saying, man, if I could just find the loaf of bread hookup, I could make some money like you, bro, because you got it popping on the east side. I could put the stand on the west side. Know what he going to do? He going to go open up the stand on the west side and do it himself instead of plugging this brother with the plate. Well, I got the loaf of bread hook up. Go to that door, bro. They're going to give it to you. Our biggest problem is we won't help each other. We hide the plugs and we'll put the money. We don't know what to do with it. I'm not going to hate the Jew. I'm not going to hate the Jew. I'm going to go over there and do business with the Jew so I can figure out what to do. These Israelites hate them people. Hate the people. What the fuck are you talking about? They the light right now. What? 
everything you mad at, nigga, you mad at what they do, and we don't know how to do it. Hate them so they can put a wall, the walls of Troy up? Fuck with you. Hey, brother, I come in peace. How you doing? You have a product over there. My people like that product. We got 30 million people over there. You know, I can distribute that product to them. Yeah. The split is right. No, yeah, okay. Oh, they made a billion dollars. Okay, we made 300 million. From that 300 million, I'm able to go over here and say, let me hire you, you, and you, and you, and then let's start doing this. Stop counting these people's pockets, bro, and tap in so you can win and help your people win. Oh, fuck them. They controlling the market, but they willing to do business with you so you can have your own market. What's the problem? Fuck you. How the fuck you teaching hate and mad that they don't love you? I don't even want them to love me. Nigga, disrespect me. Love by a few, hated by many, respected by all. Even my enemies will tell you, yeah, I don't like what he be saying and doing. But that nigga bought his business. He know how to get to that bag. Yeah. Yeah, whoopie, whoopie, whoop. But if you go playing with that nigga, it ain't gonna be no walk in the park, nigga. Something gonna happen. You ain't got to love me. You ain't got to like me, nigga. You can hate my guts. But you gonna respect my gangster. That's what you gonna do. And my gangster, taking care of my family, looking out for my homies around me that wanna do right, and continue to do legal, legal business. And doing whatever I can do to break that cycle. That's my gangster. Ain't got nothing to do with shooting the dice, or beating the nigga up, gang banging, doing no fuck all that. Any nigga glorifying that shit, he's a bitch. Straight loser. If you do the research on him, his kids don't even know him. And his son probably named after from the gang he from. Real loser type niggas. All these big old gangster niggas, let me tell you what I learned. And we're going to end it with this. These niggas, because I didn't have to bury half of these niggas. How you gangster, triple OG, quadruple, woofy, woofy, woof, and niggas got to do a car wash for your funeral fees, bro? You even a bitch in your death. You left your mama and everybody over here the hardship of putting your punk ass in the ground. You wasn't even gangster enough, nigga. To make sure they ain't have to worry about that. We ain't gonna get to taking care of your kids. Nigga, if you out there right now with no life insurance and you cripping in blood and you run around with Louis and Gucci with a motherfucking Benz or an Escalade truck, and right now if you die, your people gotta do a go for me or car wash to bury you. Use a bitch. 100. I don't give a fuck where you from, nigga. And I hope some of you niggas is on this floor because it don't cost them $100 a month to go get some motherfucking life insurance. Use a bitch and use a weirdo. But you can unbitch yourself by calling the nearest motherfucking state farm, okay? The nearest prime America and getting you a simple life insurance policy. Hey. Unbitch yourself. But right now, even if I love you, I say it out of love. You's a bitch. And I hope it hits your ass hard, hard enough for you to go Google a 1 8 number, number, 1 800 number to your local uh, motherfucker. Matter of fact, 1 890 4044. Ask for Alex Sahiri. The man gave my wife a job 23 years ago. I still remember his phone number 1 918 990 4044. Ask for Alex Sahiri. Tell him Cash Jones sent you and get you a $50, 100 something life insurance policy that'll pay your people 100 200000 if you die. Unbitch yourself. But if you run around like that right now, use a bitch. I don't give a fuck who you is. Hey, why? It sound like them niggas some bitches. They need to call the suicide hotline. I'm going to drop that. I'm just saying, bro. No, niggas want to talk about what you're How you gangster? How is you gangster? And when you die, your people stressing on how to bury you, and they already uh, a month behind on their light bill, bro. They got to go fund me. It just don't make sense. They need the suicide hotline. I, I don't respect it. They done. I don't respect it. You can call me what you want. 
but you ain't going to call me that. Whack, you's a bitch. Why am I a bitch? Uh, uh, because you, you do business with 6 9 That secures my family. What else? What you doing to secure your family? I'm outside doing what? I'm outside doing what? I'm outside. Look at me like you. Shit. Some of you niggas is outside because your auntie telling you you're fucking up my couch. You're going to get up out of here today. You got to be outside. Where else you going to go? To the park. Shit, my house too nice. I got too much shit to be outside. Man, listen, man. I'm just saying, we're going to roll this traffic. Everybody need to wake up. Our women need help. Again, our fucking women need help. They ain't make these fucking kids by their goddamn self. Our women need help. Niggas is forcing our women to do what right men about. do. And y'all wonder why our women is fucking with women. Nigga, they like, well, I might as well fuck with a woman that's like me. Ooh. At least we can come together and have some financial security. Because all these niggas want to drive my car, run up my electric bill, playing video games. And motherfucking roll blunts with the fucking money I'm making and leave me all fucked up. Our That's women need help, up. nigga. Our women need help raising these children. Men, stop being boys. You was born a male at the age of five, six years old. You got the title of being a boy when you knew what right from wrong is. Your transition from boyhood to manhood ain't based on the mustache, goatee, or the size of your dick. It's based on your fucking actions in this life, in this world, nigga. Your responsibility. If you ain't, if you 30 years old, sleeping in the same bed you slept in at 15, you was a little boy. Unbitch Man yourself. up, nigga. Unbitch yourself. Fran, it's your girl April Jones. I'm hollering at you because I just want to let you know that I'm rocking with your t-shirt biz grind. And I'm just wishing you nothing but continued success. Much love.